Hi friends, this is Trish and welcome to Happy Holy Healthy Life. Today I want to talk to you guys about the topic of envy, jealousy, comparison, all of those things that we all kind of deal with from time to time. And before we get started though, I want to ask you if you've never done it before, please subscribe. And if you've never said hello to me in the comments, it would mean the world to me if you would drop a line and tell me how you're doing, tell me where you're from, just say hi to me. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I want to start out with a Bible verse and it's in Proverbs 14 30 and it says, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. That's pretty intense. And if you've ever experienced the emotion of jealousy, Jealousy, which I know you have, or if you've ever been on the other end of jealousy, you know just how destructive it really is. So I want to kind of start out with a small story. I actually lost one of my very best friends of all time to jealousy. Now, I won't, I won't give you all the details because it's pretty dramatic, but needless to say, this girl was going to be the maid of honor in my wedding and I was going to be the maid of honor in her wedding. We had kind of lived our love stories together. We had laughed, we'd cried, we'd encouraged each other, we'd shared our hearts. Everything about our friendship seemed amazing. We were roommates. It just seemed like a friendship made in heaven. But some things happened involving some just jealousy and cattiness and drama that ended up destroying our friendship. We ended up not being the maid of honor in each other's weddings, if you can believe that. So we had to both last minute replace our maid of honors in each other's weddings. And believe it or not, um, me and this girl both had our husbands going to the same seminary across the country. <laughs> All of these just crazy things. And our whole friendship just split up. It was a mess. And it was all kind of behind jealousy, competition, and just general yuckiness. And so it's one of those feelings that we just all hate, but we're going to deal with it probably, you know, here and there for the rest of our lives. Now, I would like to say that I have completely overcome the sin of jealousy, but that would not be true. I would say, um... <laughs> The area where I still find myself getting jealous, embarrassingly enough, is comparing myself to other YouTubers. A lot of times I uh, will see somebody that just started their channel like two months ago and they've got like 10,000 subscribers. And it's really easy for me to get jealous and kind of say, that's not fair. Like, <laughs> I've worked so hard. What's wrong with me? Am I not interesting? Am I not pretty enough? And I could just go on and on and on, just kind of comparing myself and feeling envious. And so it's definitely something that I still have to work through on a day-to-day -day basis. So I want to kind of dive into the topic and I want to talk about three things. Why is jealousy bad? Where does jealousy come from? And what in the world can we do about jealousy? So let's kind of start out. Why is it bad? Well, we already touched on one of the reasons. It can absolutely destroy friendships, even between mighty women of God. Because let me tell you, me and my friend, we were like a mighty woman of God praying awesome team and jealousy and cattiness just ripped up that friendship. So that is something that is definitely a reason to have jealousy in check. Another thing is that jealousy unchecked can start to create resentment and bitterness in our heart, and then bitterness can actually turn into hatred. And Jesus sees hatred and murder on the same terms, which is crazy to think about. So those things can begin to overtake our heart and just really, really mess things up for us. Another thing is that resentment, bitterness, jealousy, envy, all of those things, they end up blocking blessings and blocking success in our own life. So I believe specifically Satan stirs up jealousy in churches or in ministry or in all kinds of different things because he knows it's going to stop that person's calling and destiny dead in its tracks. And there's just so many other reasons that, you know, jealousy is not a good thing. But another one is it facilitates this mindset of scarcity. We begin to think that there's just a teeny tiny bit of good things, a teeny tiny bit of resources, and that everybody's fighting for them and that we have to kind of claw each other's eyes out to win, which we should know that that's a total lie. In God's kingdom, we're not competing against anybody else. We're running our own race. So where does it come from? I think that there's a lot of sources and sometimes they can almost seem like opposites. So for example, we can have jealousy either rooted in insecurity or pride. And those seem like complete opposites, right? If we're insecure, we might not feel like we could ever gain something or have something that somebody else has. So we end up feeling jealous of them. 
But if we are prideful and we are arrogant, then we might think, hey, you know what? I'm the best person. And if anybody comes and tries to steal that away from us, then we can end up being jealous of them. I also think that there's even deeper roots to jealousy than just insecurity or pride. Ultimately, I believe it shows us that there's a lack of trust that we have in God. Because if you think about it, a jealous mindset is almost like having an orphan spirit. We feel like we don't have a father in heaven that is taking care of us. We feel like we've got to get everything ourselves. We feel like we have to be the one to kind of scheme and maneuver and manipulate and figure things out in order to get what we want in life. So it's really coming from a place of not trusting God. Now, the most important question is what can we do if we find ourselves in a battle with jealousy, whether it's a habitual pattern or whether it's just something that crops up here and there? Well, I have a lot of different ideas for you. So for one, you want to try the best that you can with the help of the Holy Spirit to kind of dig into the roots and ask yourself why you're jealous and face the truth. Now, I can kind of go back to that original story that I was telling you guys about with my former best friend. And one of the problems in that relationship was I was very jealous of her because this was the time before my husband and I um, got engaged. We were not dating like nothing. And little did I know that God was about to like totally make a miracle in my own love story. But at the time I was single when she got engaged and I, in my own jealousy, felt like she was rubbing it in my face all the time and like, you know, sticking her ring in my face all the time and saying, don't you love it? Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> and I just felt like she was honestly bragging all the time. So it was really difficult for me to be happy and excited for her. And I think because I was believing that about her, I kind of drew back in my heart and kind of was like, well, no, I I'm not going to say how great your wedding ring is or no, I'm not going to go way, way, way out of my way to, you know, to just tell you how great your relationship is. But really it was, there was jealousy in my heart. I was very afraid in my own heart that I was never going to get married. So it was very difficult for me to be happy for her. And so what I should have done at that time was really taken that before God and asked him to heal my heart of jealousy, asked him to help me again to put my trust and my focus back on him. But instead, I kind of let that jealousy creep into my heart and it turned out to be a disaster for my friendship. So one practical th thing that you can do when you are feeling jealous is it's called acting in the opposite spirit. So what I could have done in that instance is even though like the jealousy in my flesh wanted to be like, ugh, I'm not going to give you what you want, which is lots of attention and praise. At least that's how I felt. I could have gone ahead and given her what I thought she was wanting. You know, when she like put her ring under my nose and was like, isn't it beautiful? I could have been like, oh my gosh, yes, it is beautiful. He did such a good job. That is such an awesome blessing. And there were times, you know, it just kind of depended on the day where I could sort of overcome my jealousy and be a, a happy glowing maid of honor. But a lot of times there was just kind of that yucky spirit in between us. And another thing that you can do, this is kind of similar to what you can do if you've got somebody that you're holding unforgiveness toward you actually want to pray for that person and if you can actually bless them. And so in my situation, I really should have gone the extra mile to really be praying for her and asking the Lord, like, okay, what do you want me to do, you know, with my time and my resources and everything that I've got going on? How can I be a blessing to my best friend in this situation? Um, but instead, it was kind of like a, a tug of war in my heart about what to do. Now, another really important one is to just pray for you want and ask God, pray for what you want and ask ask God for it. So like I mentioned earlier, instead of being jealous and feeling like there's just this competition, you know, with all the girls on my campus to get a husband, I could have just continued to pray for what I was asking God for and kind of trust him with the results. Now, another really important one is to work on gratitude and contentment. And that is probably one of the hardest things when we're jealous, because when we're jealous of somebody, we just kind of feel like they have everything. We feel like it's not fair that they're getting what we should have or that they don't deserve it or just all of these things. And it's so easy to take our eyes off of the 
blessings and all of the things that God has given us. So practicing at having a grateful, contented heart is really, really good for overcoming jealousy. And at a certain level too, you have to get to a point where you decide that you're going to refuse to compete. Because I know in a lot of situations, especially in like church situations, when I was single, you know, it felt like a huge competition between the girls about who was going to get the guy's attention. And in those, some of those instances, girls really were being competitive. And I kind of remember like a silly thing from one of my jobs, like this girl knew that there was like a certain guy that I liked. So she made it her mission to like, get his number and text him. And she'd always kind of make sure to let me know like, oh, I was texting so and so and blah, blah, blah. But once you can put your trust in God, and once you can get your identity from God, then you can kind of take a step back and really focus on loving those people and refusing to compete with them and not even letting yourself stoop to their level if they really are trying to compete with you. And another one is turning envy into inspiration. Now, what do I mean by that? If there is something that you are envious enough, sometimes it can be a clue that maybe that's a desire of your heart. So I'm sure it's happened to every girl on the planet, but I'm sure like we've all seen someone that seems like they have just an amazing figure. They're fit and they're toned and they look amazing. They look like they run three marathons before breakfast every day. <laughs> but we can kind of turn that envy into inspiration and say, okay, well, what can I do to make myself better in that area? Instead of wasting time and energy being jealous of somebody else, is there some ways where I can, you know, work out for 15 minutes a day to kind of work on my own situation? Um, and then finally, I think it's so important to avoid situations that that constantly stir up jealousy. So for me, that meant a long time ago, I got off of Facebook, you know, I had like over a 1000 people that I knew from like high school and college and just different church groups. And I found myself constantly Facebook stalking people and getting jealous and just kind of feeling like, oh, she thinks she's so awesome. And so it was good for my heart to just flat out get off of Facebook. Um, For a lot of women, they find that, you know, reading magazines like Vogue and Cosmopolitan is not good for their heart. So they kind of get out of those situations. And if you happen to, you know, maybe have some associates or friends that are catty and competitive with each other, and they try to drag you into that, it might be good to kind of step back. Now I have one bonus tip for you. It's having an eternal mindset. And basically that means that you are living for the day that you meet Jesus face to face. When you meet Jesus face to face, it's not going to matter how many vacations you went on. It's not going to matter what money was in your bank account. It's not going to matter, you know, what you looked like. He's going to be looking at your heart and the things that he gave you. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with the talents, the gifts, the callings, all of the blessings that I gave in your life? How did you invest it in the kingdom? And we're not going to want to say, oh, I didn't do anything with it, Jesus, because I was so busy competing with my neighbor. I was so busy thinking about what everybody else had. So having that eternal mindset can really, really help us out in the issues of jealousy. So that's all I have for today. Again, if you haven't ever subscribed or commented or liked, I would appreciate if you did that. And if you have any video ideas that you'd like to see from me in the future, I'd be happy to make them. I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a great day.